Welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme six, element four, international aid. Bags off the desk, I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Aid is money or resources transferred from a wealthier country to a poorer country. There's many different types of aid, each with their own aim. So for example, there's aid to get a country back on its feet after a natural disaster and would usually involve sending food, water and medical supplies. But there's also longer term aid, which is more towards helping a country to develop, and this would be more in terms of financial aid. There's also top-down aid, where the government decides what's going to happen for everybody, and bottom-up aid, where the local people and councils decide. So let's start off by having a look at what are these different types of aid. Well, we've got short-term aid, and that's the emergency aid. So after a natural disaster, or when a country is in absolute dire need of the basic essentials, then this is usually given out. So as I've mentioned, things like food, water, medical supplies, it might also include things like special um, specialised support, so there might be involved rescue teams or doctors going out as well. Now, there are limitations to each of these types of aid. So for short term, it is a bit of a, a support, a crutch to use for a country. But it's very easy for a country to start relying on this emergency aid. It doesn't help the country to develop. They're becoming really reliant on external help, which doesn't help them in the long term. The long term aid is given over a much longer period of time, usually over five, 10 years, maybe it's even longer. And it's the aim of this aid to try and help this country or this area to develop. So that would be economic development or social development, political development. And generally, this is not the sort of thing where they're going to start sending food or water. It's more to do with their supplying money or perhaps some services so that a country can design its own infrastructure projects, uh, projects like dams, for example, or big uh, road networks or new rail systems to try and help the country to develop even further. The disadvantage with long-term aid is it tends to be top-down. So that means that either the government of the country or the country giving the aid will decide how that money is going to be spent. And it won't necessarily help the people of those areas because the government might not know exactly what do these people need in order to develop. There's bilateral aid, which is where one country helps another country out. And that is usually on a one-to-one like, -one basis. But again, this ends up relying on one country to supply and if they cut off the money then that country is going to be entirely without support. There's multilateral aid and multilateral aid is probably the most common type of aid where lots of countries group together to provide aid and it's usually done through organisations such as the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, the World Bank, the UN, even the EU provides multilateral aid to other countries. Multilateral aid can be short term or long term, but tends to be more in, uh, in long term. But the limitations are that these organisations supplying the money are probably going to give the country a lot of rules or regulations and expectations that has to be done for that money to be used. So that, like, there's, there's limits and expectations on how that money is spent. And then we've got charitable aid which is what we see on the uh, the TV where they've got adverts for uh, asking for money for Save the Children or for water pumps in Syria and things like that and relies on the um, general public to supply some money. This relies on donors and if they don't have enough money coming in then they can't support the countries in the way they would like to. So if we have a look at one example, Malawi in Africa. So this is an example of bilateral aid. So Japan has been supplying money and uh, resources to Malawi because there's an area called Middleshire that is suffering really, really badly from soil erosion. So all its uh, fertile soil is turning to sand in a desert, basically. Uh, it's difficult to grow crops and therefore they're having a hard time feeding themselves and also providing an income for the local residents. So with an increased population in the region, it's led to more trees being cut down. Um, and with less trees, there's also less rainfall. So then that's going to lead to maybe some more drought as well. 
So the project was aimed to deal with the soil erosion by using local materials to set up barrier systems to stop the soil and the wet from being carried away with the water, by supplying trees that grow quicker than the native species to try and anchor the soil and provide nutrients to refertilize it, educating the locals on how soil erosion has occurred, so educating them on why deforestation is bad and how to care for the soil and how to irrigate, how to farm efficiently, and then also using technologies to increase the yield of the crops. Now this is a bottom-up approach which means that the local residents have been given a say in how they want the money to be spent and how or what would actually improve their lives the most. Well, that's it for today. But continue your own pace by completing the uh, Now Try It tasks for homework. Class dismissed.